Dear Internet, je m'appelle October, and that is all I know from close to six years of French classes. For those of you who do not speak bad French, hey Internet, it's October here. Welcome back to Games That Time Forgot. This time around, we're looking at The Saboteur, put out in 2009 by EA Games. It's viewed as the swan song for developer Pandemic. So without ado, because there is a lot to talk about, let's get to the plot. You play Irish mechanic and race car driver Sean Devlin, one of the many exiles you'll meet in France during the Nazi occupation. After losing the 1940 Grand Prix to Kurt Dierke, a Nazi colonel, and then losing your friend Jules to the same, Sean Devlin goes on his roaring rampage of revenge and accidentally liberates Paris, kind of not really just starts the uprising. And surprisingly, not the focus of the game. The game is fairly personal. You're following Devlin on his path of revenge. I kind of dig that, actually. I like it when games are willing to take a major historical backdrop to tell a very personal story. Man, we review a lot of games about revenge! Anyway, since this is a game about sabotage and destruction and everything else, and working with the French underground during the occupation, you're gonna get the mandatory Lady Bond in the form of Skylar St. Clair, a British SOE agent, the mandatory artist turned resistance leader in Luke, and the mandatory damsel in not so much distress in Veronique. Plus Freedom Fighters, Father Figures, and somebody who you probably shouldn't trust. Throughout the game, you're also going to confront various other members of the Resistance and do side missions for them, because hey, punching Nazis is fun. You also get to sneak around, you get to race cars, and of course, shooting, shooting, shooting. Blowing up stuff, shooting, 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 blowing up more stuff, shooting, 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 and the least attentive Nazis since Hogan had heroes. To address one of the elephants in the room, you're going to notice a lot of male gaze in this game. Most of it is delivered by Skylar St. Clair, the Lady Bond of the British SOE. Now granted, her wardrobe choices are more in line with modern feminine wear. And even then, the neckline is slightly daring. At the same time, the women in the game are portrayed as competent, resourceful, and reliable, which is more than what you can say for a lot of the male cast. In fact, in terms of sexy banter, the men come off as lecherous, while the women come off as in control of the situation. This allows a case to be made that the game is not misogynistic, and to be fair, I'm on the fence of it. But at the same time, a lot of the marketing, even when you boot up the game, is booty shots. And there is the download put out by EA, where the women in the cabaret are topless. I did not use that for this, uh, for this video, that's for my own private playing later, because I am lonely and terrible. Moving on also, one of the big, huh, things for me came from the fact that this is a game that takes place in World War II, a very storied and very well-rounded part of history. And it's a subject, the French Resistance, that usually gets glanced over. We've seen the Battle of Normandy a thousand times. We've seen the invasion of Berlin by the Allied forces. Hell, even freaking Call of Duty at least went into Stalingrad and mentioned the fact that the Russians were a major part of World War II. In terms of the big figures for 1940, however, only two are mentioned, Hitler and Mussolini. This is a game about the French Resistance that somehow never mentions Charles de Gaulle. It never mentions Winston Churchill once the British SOE come in. They do mention the French Foreign Legions. They do mention that the war has spread to Northern Africa. And I suppose, in a really strange sort of way, I should have expected this. The character of Sean Devlin is based on real-life William Grover Williams, a French driver who was also an agent of the British SOE. While I can't speak for certain whether or not Williams had a standoff in the rain at the top of the Eiffel Tower with a Nazi colonel, he did pass away in 1945 in a Nazi concentration camp, having been captured and imprisoned for his efforts to liberate his people from oppression. While that might be a very depressing and heavy ending for an action video game, it's still one of those things that is fairly important. It's a brilliant moment in French history. Oh, and something else. They don't even mention the Vichy government. That, that boggles my mind. It's a game about the French resistance, the uprising in Paris. It's a great historical moment, and it would also allow to show divisions of the French people. But, no, we have the Irish expatriate, who, despite allusions to his involvement with the IRA and his family's involvement with the IRA, who is totally willing to drop grudges about possible family murder and side with the British to get revenge for his friend Jules. Maybe that's why the color scheme also kind of threw me for a loop. For most of the game, I thought that it was fairly binary. You had the Resistance, represented in blue, the Nazis, represented in red, and Sean Devlin in the middle of it all, with green eyes. That's it. No other colorful affectations until you're able to liberate certain areas of Paris. So I was thinking, okay, since Devlin really is only out for revenge, that freeing Paris is a totally secondary concern, that's why his eyes are green. 
He's not completely committed. But that got thrown out the window since Villain Dierker's eyes are blue. So it's just a very cool neo-noir touch, something you'd see in Sin City, which is great, even if it does take away from some of the artistry of the game. It's very beautiful. It catches the eye, to the point that liberating Paris seems to make it a little bit more dull. If you can imagine that. There's a weird message to send. Anyway, this is a game I really enjoyed. Up until the last, let's say, 30 seconds. The entire last act of the game is much more rewarding if you know the history about the build-up to World War II. If you know about the IRA. If you know about the Spanish Civil War. If you know anything about what was going on in Europe leading up to 1940 to 1945. In that case, the end showdown between Dierke and Devlin... It's laden with reasons, with things that brought the people to this exact point. And we all know where it's going to end. We all know how it's going to end. And then they pull the rug out from you. My recommendation is, after that last shot is fired, turn off your TV. Let the game run through its credits, through its attempt at a, hey, it works for James Bond type ending. Just let it go. It's a much more rewarding sequence. If, once you watch the color come back into Paris... You don't watch the end of the game. Literally, it knocked off a lot of my enjoyment of it. I was actually laughing at that stupid closing line. And when the credits started to roll, it was gut laughter. Let's do the wrap up, because now I'm thinking about that ending and it's pissing me off. I was a huge fan of Pandemic Games, and I was very sad when they closed their doors in 2009. This is a great swan song for them. It could have been much better. The writing is a little loose, but the gameplay is phenomenal. It's also a joy to be running through Paris, and not to be running through an Erzatz New York or an Erzatz Los Angeles. So with that in mind, I'm giving the Saboteur 7 Eiffel Towers out of a possible 10. Well, that's it for Games That Time Forgot. Until next time, I am October. Please be sure to share, like, and subscribe. And as always, I don't have a catchphrase. Have a great night, people of Earth. The Vichy government... Vichy? 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 Vichy France? Vichy France? Vichy... Vene Vidi Vichy? Dude, man, uh, I've only ever seen it written. I've never actually, I've never actually had to say it. I did not use that for this, uh, for this video. That's for my own private playing later because I am lonely and terrible. That was supposed to be a joke. I really don't have a tone of voice for that, though. I'm sorry, I'll stop doing the French accent thing now.